This is Abdul Saad, clinical psychologist at Vital Mind Psychology, and I'm recording this video uh, as uh, a series of videos dealing with uh, personalities and how to get along with people. And in our first video um, uh, that I uploaded, we spoke briefly about how to understand people that might irritate or upset us and how to develop some um, psychological insights that we could keep in mind when dealing with such people. And as promised um, in that video, in, in this uh, video that I'm doing, we're going to be talking about um, narcissism. So we're going to speak about a particular uh, type of personality pathology. So this is a personality disorder that I'm talking about when I talk about narcissism, um, which can be, or which is quite destructive in relationships. And many people um, can be very badly burnt by narcissistic individuals. Um, in looking at some of the research in preparation for the video, um, narcissism, what is narcissism, is actually one of the top Google searches. So people are out there are quite hungry for information about narcissism um, because it is seemingly becoming more prevalent in um, our society across a broad range of age groups. And people want to understand what this condition is all about and through that understanding develop some protective mechanisms so that we're not burnt by narcissists um, and if we have to deal with them that we have some tools to protect ourselves. So I'm talking about narcissism as a personality disorder. That is a, a, a clinical condition, a severe clinical condition that uh, manifests itself habitually in a person um, across time regardless of the situation they're in. That's what we sort of call a personality disorder. So it's not really dependent on, you know, if the person is under stress or not. Uh, a narcissistic individual, this is their dominant mode of being. And the way I want to um, divide the video is to look at how narcissists view themselves, including what is their inner experience, as well as how they view others, and uh, flesh that out a little bit more. So. The self-view of a narcissist, how do they view themselves? Well, there's an exaggerated sense of self-importance. So the narcissist has a view of themselves as superior, as excellent, um, and this leads them to feel entitled to special privileges, to special treatment. Um, these are individuals who often have very poor boundaries in relationships and aren't really aware of uh, etiquette a protocol um, because of their entitlement and their un which is an un unreasonable expectation that they're going to be given uh, special treatment. They're going to be treated more favorably than other people. These are people who often are preoccupied with fantasies of unlimited success. Um, they really have a deep desire to be seen by others for what they either what they have achieved or what they own. Um, and sometimes this can come across in a very childlike way, like a, you know, a child showing you a shiny toy. For a narcissist, it might be their shiny you know, new red sports car or um, a shiny new very attractive partner that they have, you know, the, the trophy wife, as an example. Um, and often, you know, narcissists, not often, always, are very arrogant. Um, there's an arrogance, there's this air of dominance. And one of the problems that we have with, with narcissists is that this exaggerated sense of self-importance, this arrogance, this inflated ego that they have um, is not really influenced by their day-to-day -day experiences. What I mean by that is that the narcissist is not really susceptible to their life experiences influencing or moderating their judgment of themselves. So for a non-narcissist, for example, um, life will bring about many upheavals, failures and setbacks. And this can often help us as we mature psychologically to gain a more realistic sense of ourselves. We might have you know, we might have think, well, I actually need to study hard. I didn't do so well in that exam, although I thought I would ace it. So there's a moderating, there's a, there's a sense of, okay, I need to sort of bring myself back to earth. And everyday life 
and upsets can be good in that way, that they can help ground us in, in a more equal reality of what we're capable of. So we're not grandiose, neither are we wallowing in low self-esteem thinking we're failures, but we, we achieve a middle path. The interesting thing about narcissists is that they're incredibly resistant to everyday life experiences of setbacks and of failures. And the mechanism that operates within them is that they disown experiences which may show them to have failed or which may show their shortcomings. And the way they do that typically is that they project the failures onto others. Um, an example might be if, if a student is um, suffering from um, a high level of narcissism, they may react to failing an exam or not doing as well as they think they should have done by, um, in an extreme case, launching legal action against the faculty or the school, um, seeking to humiliate or berate their teacher, um, having a tantrum, becoming really angry, because there's a failure for self-reflection in narcissism. There's a failure to um, acknowledge that, hey, maybe I didn't make the grade, maybe I didn't study enough, maybe I'm not smart enough. Any of those insights which a reasonable person might entertain are incredibly threatening to the narcissist. So they must be disowned. Because beneath the veneer of the uh, self-aggrandizing, grandiose, arrogant persona is a person who feels a deep inner sense of emptiness and a deep inner sense of shame. But if they could access those feelings, then they would lose their psychological ground. And this is what we see in narcissists who face a major life crisis or upheaval that they can't very easily disown. They can become very unhinged, <clears throat> dangerous people who can be out on a mission to destroy those who they perceive have you know, contributed to their failure or have humiliated them. So this is the, this is the, the self-view of a narcissist. Um, and it's, it's very resistant to um, feedback from the environment. So this person is insulated from the normal wear and tear of everyday life that tends to ground us and make us more wise and mature. Now in terms of, so that's the narcissist self-view. Um, in terms of how narcissist, narcissists relate to and deal with others, um, there's two main ways that they will um, relate and deal with other people. And they will often use the same strategy on, on the same person. And it can be very confusing when, you, when you're dealing with narcissists. The first way they operate in relation to others is what we call idealization. So narcissists will um, are very good at pe putting people up on a pedestal, making them feel good about themselves, um, using charm, using charisma. And this is especially the case in the early phase of a relationship when the narcissist tends to idealize their love object or the person that they are interested in. Um, and what they often engage in, in, in romantic relationships, is what's called love bombing, where they, they are just um, giving the person a deluge of praise and affection and messages and, and, and gifts and flowers, and the other person is just not giving a chance to process what's actually happening. So narcissists have a tendency to idealize people. Um, it, it could be in a, in a, um, in a company, uh, if the CEO is narcissistic or the boss, they might idealize the new kid on the block, you know, the, the, the junior staff member straight out of uni. You know, look how great they are, they're going to go do this for the company. But then very quickly what a narcissist will do is they are very easily disappointed in people. So when people do not match their expectations for what they would want, they very easily devalue people. And this is the second way that they deal with you. They idealize and then they devalue. They inflate you, then they deflate you. And in the devaluation, the narcissist expresses their rage at their fantasies not being fulfilled, at you letting them down. And the devaluation can take many forms. It could be simply that you get the cold shoulder and are treated in a passive-aggressive way. Or it could mean that you are humiliated. Um, you know, a vendetta is launched against you. They may seek to destroy your career, your reputation, um, because that narcissistic rage, which is very primitive and infantile, is triggered. Um, and we often see this with narcissists in relationship, where they go through 
periods of idealizing the partner, then devaluing them. And this is what makes narcissistic um, individuals prone to violence, especially domestic violence. Um, the, the, exa the example I give of how narcissists deal with people is like a toddler who gets excited about a shiny new toy. And if any, any people that have had kids can relate to this, and, and all of a sudden um, they might smash the toy or drop it on the ground or you know, launch it across the room because this infantile rage of it didn't meet my need. You know, I, I pressed this button, it didn't work, or it's not as pretty as I thought, or it's become boring, so I discard it. So given that narcissists deal with people in this way, they can um, leave behind them a lot of carnage, interpersonal carnage. They can do a lot of damage to people. And fundamentally, what's at the heart of the way that narcissists deal with people is that they, they view people, what psychologists, psychologists would say, as an extension of themselves. What that means is that narcissists have incredible difficulty relating to people as people, as who they are. Instead, they relate to people as how do you make me feel about me? They view people as a mirror image or extension of themselves. And if you look nice and shiny, if you're attractive, well, then you mirror back to me how I feel about myself okay, in terms of my attractiveness or charm or intelligence. So I want to be attached with you because you are an extension of my greatness. But as soon as you give an opinion that differs from theirs, as soon as you show some form of human vulnerability, then that whole veneer is cracked and you are immediately devalued, okay? And the narcissistic rage can manifest in multiple ways, as we've said. So in, in summary, narcissism is um, um, quite a severe personality disorder. Um, it is, on some accounts, increasing within our society. And many people now are seeking to become educated about narcissism, about how narcissists operate um, within themselves, sub their subjective experience, as well as in their relationships. And what we might do is create a series on narcissism and in following um, videos that I'll upload, I'll talk about topics such as um, the creation of a narcissist. What sort of parenting, what sort of environment typically leads to someone developing narcissism? Um, we'll talk about how to deal with narcissists um, in the workplace. Um, and how to, especially for people, um, you know, in the early stages of a relationship or perhaps thinking about um, entering relationships, how to become more aware of um, or how to better pick up on narcissists. Not that we want people to be paranoid, but to have a level of awareness of what are some of the telltale signs that someone I might be getting to know or someone that is interested in me is narcissistic because one of the key things is narcissists have this ability to make us doubt our own judgments and perceptions, right? They, they, they can have this incredible ability to make us think that we're crazy in some way or something's wrong with us. So I think that would be good to create a bit of a video series. And if there's any other videos, any other topics you would like me to, um, uh, to address in, through the YouTube channel, please leave a comment. Um, and any other feedback, positive or negative, would be appreciated. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you next time.